Video from earlier today, the families of the people still held hostage by Hamas stormed the meeting of Israel's Knesset, and you can see them there holding signs, and they were screaming at some of the lawmakers there. I want to talk about this and several other developments that have happened over the past several days. Let's bring in Avi Hyman, spokesperson for the Israeli government, joining us live here. And Avi, thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to be here with us. Thanks very much for having me on again, Josh. Of course. Well, first off, I just want to get your reaction, the Israeli government's reaction to this situation. We know that we have seen it before. There have been these rallies and demonstrations that have taken place all throughout the weekend. What is the Israeli government's statement on that? Josh, our heart goes out to every one of those families, everyone that is uh, going through a living hell, a daily living hell with their family being uh, held by Gaza, deep underground, um, with with no word from them, with no access to the to the Red Cross, etc. Our, our hearts are with them, and we understand, you know, that uh, emotions run high, and we are doing our absolute utmost to bring home those hostages. We have already brought home 110 hostages. There are 110 Israeli former Israeli hostages at home with their families because of the military pressure that we applied on Hamas. Hamas understands one thing, force. They don't they won't release the hostages because it you know they feel like it because they've suddenly become uh, uh, boy scouts. They shoot rockets at us from boy scout centers in Gaza. They won't become boy scouts. They need to be brought to their knees like we brought them to their knees the first time when they release those 110 hostages. We will continue with the military pressure. The military pressure um, will, will bring home the hostages. All right, I do want to show these photos here that were released by the IDF just a couple days ago here, and they're what's known as the uh, Hamas terror dungeons. Tell me what you see in these photos and what they really tell people out there about the conditions that these hostages uh, were being held in and some are being held in. So there's still 136 Israelis um, being held uh, in Gaza. And a lot of times, you know, when we speak about uh, these uh, Hamas terror dungeons, when we speak about the tunnels, people don't understand. People don't understand that this is four times the size of the London underground. These are vast, vast tunnels that go across all of Gaza, an underground world underneath mosques and hospitals and UN facilities and schools with shafts popping up into uh, children's bedrooms and underneath children's beds. And it's a vast, vast um, uh, network of tunnels that we have to syst systematically go through and destroy. Now, in that process, we discovered what is clearly holding cells, dungeons, um, cages where hostages were held. That little room that you showed up to 20 hostages, we believe, were held there. Their DNA was found. And most painful as a, as a father was, was the drawings that were found there. The IDF put out images of drawings by a five-year-old Israeli hostage who is now at home with her family. But what was she drawing deep underground, deep under Gaza? She was drawing pictures of a house, of a home, of freedom, of trees, of birds. No five-year-old should have to be held in custody by masked monsters with machine guns. But this is what we're seeing. We're seeing some of the reality. And uh, a part of me is glad that, that, that these images are being shared with the world to understand the brutality of the enemy that we're up against. We have two missions in this war, as you know, Josh. One is to bring home every last hostage. And the second is to destroy Hamas. And both of those things will be done. Now, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that the U.S., Egypt, and Qatar are pushing for Israel and Hamas to accept a deal that they say would end the war, release all of the hostages, and essentially establish a Palestinian state. I know you can't go into detail on any of this as there are negotiations and things of that nature that are underway, but is this something that is being truly considered? Josh, as the Prime Minister said um, last night, the Hamas proposal that's on the table is basically to turn back the clock, to turn back the clock and, and, and to uh, live in some kind of reality by which they didn't invade our borders on October 7th, where they didn't 
massacre a thousand two hundred Israelis, killing children in front of their parents and parents in front of their children, weaponizing sexual crime, the pedophilia, the necrophilia. It's as if that didn't happen. They want us to turn back the clock, take out all of our troops from Gaza, um, release all of their prisoners from uh, from our jails, um, and then give them a state as a gift. That's not going to happen. Not under uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's watch. I don't think uh, even even a small minority of Israelis would want that. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very very clear. Um, that we will not capitulate to Hamas, we will not surrender to Hamas. We will call the shots in this war, and our objectives are clear: the dis the destruction of Hamas and the and the uh, return of all of the hostages. If we were to somehow, you know, just put our hands up and surrender to Hamas, or or have any uh, type of agreement that would leave Hamas in control, the time would be ticking. The time would be ticking until the next October 7th because you don't have to listen to me. You have to listen to the Hamas leaders that say that they will do October 7th again and again and again. And the only way that they won't do October 7th again is if they don't exist anymore. We need to destroy Hamas and that's what we'll do. Iran, their president, their leader there said over the weekend that he vowed revenge against Israel for that airstrike that did kill at least five of the Iranian military advisors. First off, has Israel taken responsibility for that airstrike? And also, does Israel take a threat like that from Iran seriously? Josh, Iran threatens Israel and America on a daily basis. They have done for, for decades. Uh, my prime minister has been banging the drum on the th global threat of Iran for, for, for 30 years. Um, he's been very, very clear that uh, those terrorists that seek our destruction, those terrorists that uh, actively uh, plan uh, attacks against us, uh, we will come after them. Um, and historically, this is something that uh, Israel has uh, has done. We have gone after the terrorists that, that, that seek to uh, kill um, Israeli men, women, and children, and we will continue to do so. I want to talk about the U.S. here. As Jewish House Democrats in the U.S. are denouncing Netanyahu's comments about opposing a Palestinian state, is what Netanyahu really said anything different than what he said in the past? And you touched on this already, but isn't this just kind of echoing the comments that he's already made by saying a two-state solution is not the answer? Josh, the, the concept two-state solution is beautiful. It's beautiful, you know, when it's uh, discussed in an ivory tower far away from uh, Jerusalem, far away from Tel Aviv. But a two-state solution, firstly, it's not a solution because it's never worked. Um, it's been offered to the Palestinians multiple, multiple times over the last hundred years, and they've rejected it every single time. Now, that being said, a Palestinian state would be putting a potential terror entity um, on the hills of Judea and Samaria uh, the West Bank, overlooking 70% of our population. Now, all it would take is a few extremists to fire rockets into central Tel Aviv from there. It's it's a stone's throw away. Um, that, that doesn't sound like a, a recipe for peace. Uh, and if you want to talk about Gaza, um, where we're currently uh, prosecuting our war against Hamas, I mean, we already gave Gaza to the Palestinian Authority. Hamas took over Hamas through Palestinian Authority uh, uh, Fatah representatives off the roofs of the buildings there and took over the Gaza Strip. Um, we, we, we can't work in a situation like that. The Prime Minister has made it very clear that uh, we will need to retain security control um, over, over the, the entire area, um, dare I say, from the river to the sea. Uh, we need to, to have security control for the safety of our children, for the safety of future generations. Israel is is fighting a war um, to, to defend its very existence. And we can't suddenly, mid-war, capitulate and say, OK, you know, you've had a good run. Here's the state. Please attack us again soon. That's not how it works. My last question here before I let you go. Israel's cabinet approved that plan for frozen tax funds earmarked for the Hamas-run Gaza Strip to be held in Norway rather than transferred to the Palestinian Authority. What were the concerns there? The concerns are clear, and they're concerns for uh, the American public too, Josh, which is that um, tax money 
could go through to Gaza, could help uh, Hamas um, continue to uh, work actively to destroy our country. I mean, what country would, uh, would help uh, the movement of funds to the very organization that is trying to destroy it, to the very organization that just months ago was, was butchering babies? Um, we, we, we've basically said that money uh, for the Palestinian Authority will go to Norway, uh, will be held in Norway, and until there are clear assurances um, to the Israeli government and the Israeli people that, that that money will not end up in the coffers of Hamas, that that money will not go um, into uh, to, to, to pay for pay for slay, to uh, give money to terrorists that uh, have Jewish blood on their hands, uh, we can't we can't enable uh, we we can't allow a single dollar, a single shekel to go through to fund our own destruction. That's what it's about. All right. Avi Hyman there, Israeli government spokesperson. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Anything else you want to add at all before I let you go? No, Josh, just as I always say, I want to thank the American people for their continued support, thank the uh, American administration for their continued support. We will continue with those two missions to destroy Hamas and to bring every one of the 136 hostages home. All right. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it as always.